Fall is my absolute favorite season. I love when the weather cools down. I love the beauty of the changing leaves. I love being able to put on flannel shirts and drink hot apple cider like I am right now. And I love Halloween and the attention to horror movies and all things spooky that the whole world joins in on during this very special season. And today I'm gonna to tell you about some great autumnal movies that are both great movies for you to enjoy, but are also great movies to feel those great fall vibes. How's it going everyone? And welcome again to the Cobwebs channel. My name is Daniel, and I'm so excited to talk to you about autumnal movies. I think this video is going to be a great mood setter for you to really enjoy that season because I'll be showing some visuals from these beautiful autumnal movies as I talk about them, and I'll be sipping on some hot apple cider. Highly recommend you to grab your favorite autumnal drink, whether it be something pumpkin spice, something chai tea, or something apple, whatever you enjoy. So a couple of disclaimers before we jump into the list. First of all, there are going to be a lot of horror movies on this list, but this isn't a horror exclusive exclusive list. I will be throwing in some curveballs, but this list is going to be made up of the kind of movies that I really enjoy and I talk about on this channel. Older movies, spooky movies, things like that. And also this list is not ranked because honestly I couldn't think of the best way to do it. Do I rank based on fall vibes or based on movie quality? Nah, this video is just recommendations. So the first movie on the list is actually the one that inspired this video. It's a recent discovery for me, and that is Alfred Hitchcock's The Trouble with Harry from 1955. This is a completely delightful, charming little murder thriller, sort of. As we all know, Alfred Hitchcock is obsessed with murder, and this one is too. This is about a small community of people who discover a dead body out in the woods. The dead guy's name is Harry, and they're all just trying to figure out what to do with him, who killed him, some of them believe that they killed him. Some of them care that he's dead. A lot of them don't. And it's just kind of a wacky, zany movie in which they figure out what to do with a dead body. It's an unusual film for Hitchcock because, I mean, almost all of his movies deal with murder, so that's not surprising. But the tone that this movie deals with it is kind of surprising for Hitchcock because it's very fun and whimsical and funny. It's the first movie with Shirley MacLaine, and she's delightful in it. Probably the main star is Edmund Gwynn, who you probably know as Santa Claus from the original Miracle on 34th Street, but for me, the actor who steals the show is a guy named John Forsythe, who plays this kind of bohemian painter who lives in the community and just kind of gets wrapped up in this situation and helping people out, and he is so completely hilarious. He's such an intelligent guy who's so witty, his dialogue is written so well, and he has such a bursting energy to him. I just love him in this movie, and he just steals the entire show from me, but it's the fall vibes that really make this movie special for me. I love Hitchcock, and I hadn't heard anything about this movie until a friend of mine recently told me that it has great fall vibes, and it does. It was shot in Vermont, and they intended it to be a very autumnal movie, but when they arrived there to film, most of the fall foliage had already fallen. So what they did is they glued leaves to the trees, and the movie is so beautiful and idyllic looking in this small New England town with incredible colors to all of the trees, and they glued those leaves on, which is such a crazy story about the making of this movie. That just cracks me up, but it was worth the time because this is one of the most beautiful autumnal movies I have ever seen. Next up, I want to talk to you about the Universal Monsters. Now, pretty much any Universal Monsters movie is going to be great for the fall, even the ones that aren't explicitly autumnal. But for me, the most autumnal one of them all is The Wolfman from 1941, which also happens to be my favorite movie of the bunch. The Wolfman is a classic story of a doomed man and every man, Larry Talbot, who moves back to his hometown, back to live with his father, and while there, gets bitten by a werewolf and becomes cursed to become one himself when the wolfbane blooms and the autumn moon is bright. But it's not just the mention of the word autumn within that classic poem within the film, but it's the fact that this is the Universal Monsters movie that much takes place out in the woods. And this forest, which of course they created on a studio backlot, turns out to be just the most beautiful, spooky, fantastical autumnal forest you've ever seen. The scenes of the wolfman creeping through the woods while there's fog and jagged barren trees all around are just everything I need to get in the spooky autumn season. This is a movie that I watch every single year. It's one of the movies that gets me most into that fall mood. I've already watched it this season. I love it so much. The Wolfman's my favorite Universal Monsters movie, and I think it's the most autumnal. All right, next I want to talk to you about a couple of Stephen King adaptations, because I really associate Stephen King, that King New England atmosphere, with the fall, and these are a couple of my favorite for the autumn season. First up is The Dark Half from 1993. This
This is actually directed by George Romero. The Dark Half is kind of a Jekyll and Hyde type story about a man played by Timothy Hutton, who when he was a kid actually had an ingrown twin in his brain, just the small remnants of this twin that surgeons removed from him. But when he gets older, he becomes a writer who also ghost writes really smutty books under a different pen name. And that alter ego, kind of born of his twin, uh, comes to life and becomes this evil version of him. As I'm describing it, my head is kind of spinning. Look, the thing that doesn't quite work about this movie is the premise. It's just really out there and the mechanics of how it actually works don't really make sense and it can be a little bit hard to follow. This is not a perfect movie and yeah, the premise is a little bit wonky at times. But I don't want to make it sound like the movie is bad. Yes, the premise has issues, but I actually really do enjoy the movie. I really like Timothy Hutton in the lead role. I care about his family, and I really like Michael Rooker as the sheriff who's trying to help them. It's really rare to see Michael Rooker just play a good guy. You almost expect the whole movie he's going to turn out to be evil just because he's Michael Rooker. And yeah, spoilers, I guess, but he's a good dude in this movie. And that's unusual to see, but pretty cool. But what's great about it is that fall season. Now, while The Trouble with Harry is very much a beautiful, idyllic version of fall, this, I think, really well highlights the gloominess of fall. Just the overcast skies, the clouds, looking like it just recently rained, with dried, dead leaves all over the place, blowing in the wind. That's just the kind of perfect atmosphere that this movie sets really well. And next is one of my absolute favorite movies to watch every autumn, and that is Pet Cemetery from 1989. This is directed by Mary Lambert. This could be, if I'm being honest with myself, my favorite Stephen King adaptation. I am a huge fan of the Pet Cemetery book, of that story, and this adaptation for me is just beautiful. Yes, I know it has some corniness, some cheesiness that people like to point out, but for me, that's all part of the charm. Pet Cemetery, of course, is the story of a family who moves to Maine. This was actually shot in Maine, and they happen to move on a busy road, and their young son is killed by a racing truck going by. It's horrifying, and their neighbor, played by the incredible Fred Gwynn shows the dad the pet cemetery out in the woods where they can bury the son and maybe he will come back to life. Now for a while this movie is just a beautiful idyllic New England atmosphere where everything is green and lush but as soon as their cat dies and they start contemplating burying the cat in the pet cemetery where he might come back to life Right at that moment, the season turns and it becomes very autumnal. There's dead leaves all over the place. You get much more of a spooky atmosphere. So as far as autumnal movies, I like that this one uses the seasons to change the mood of the film from very beautiful and green to dying and decaying. Yes, I love fall. It's my favorite season by far, but it is a season that represents death. All of nature is dying around you and it's incredible that it's beautiful while it happens, but that's what's happening. And this is a movie that really highlights that in a great way. And I love the movie so much. The atmosphere, I love all the actors in it. I know a lot of people like to throw the main guy under the bus. I think he's great. But of course, Fred Gwynn runs away with the movie. He's awesome. Just love that super thick New England accent he's putting on. It's so good. All right, that was a lot of horror movies. Let's run away from that and talk about a Douglas Sirk movie, all That Heaven Allows from 1955. This is a romantic melodrama about Jane Wyman, a widow with two pretty much grown children who meets a younger man, a local gardener played by Rock Hudson, who has dreams of growing trees for a living and falls in love with him. He falls in love with her. They have this great love affair. But when it's time to take the relationship more seriously, she is very scared of the judgment that she's going to get from her rich aristocratic friends and her snobby kids. Now, one thing I want to warn you about about the first half, maybe a little bit less, is a beautiful autumnal movie with incredible scenery. This movie was actually shot in Hollywood, like on a back lot, but they created an autumnal atmosphere so well with beautiful leaves, all the changing colors. It's a little bit like The Trouble with Harry, although not quite that beautiful. But uh, as the movie goes, the movie takes place over several months. It does turn into winter and you do get some Christmas towards the end of this movie. So if you don't want to see any snow or any Christmas whatsoever until Halloween is over. Totally understand, avoid this one. But if you don't mind that so much, there is some great fall atmosphere to be got. I love Douglas Sirk movies, and I think this is a really good one. It's very simple, it's under 90 minutes, and it has a great message about being whoever you wanna be, no matter what people think of it, and just being true to yourself and not letting unimportant things 
be too important. It's a message that really rings true with me and really rings with my personal philosophy. And simple though it may be, I do think it's pretty great. And I love the main performances from Jane Wyman and Rock Hudson. I think they're so great together. And I just love Rock Hudson's character in this so much. The dude's always wearing flannel. All he cares about is growing trees. He doesn't give a crap what anyone thinks about anything. He's just a pretty awesome guy. And I just, he's kind of like everything that I want to be. Like, that's that's my dream. That's my dream version of myself right there. Okay, next up, I cannot talk about the autumn season without talking about a little village called Sleepy Hollow and the ghost that haunts it the Headless Horseman. Sleepy Hollow is my favorite story for this season. I love to take walks out in nature when that fall air is really crisp and listen to the original Washington Irving story, and I highly recommend doing that. But as far as movies, I love both the Disney version, which you can find as the second half of The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad. It was released in 1949, and it's essentially two different shorts. One is The Wind in the Willows, and the second is Sleepy Hollow. They put them together and released it theatrically. So the theatrical film is The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad, but you can easily just watch the second half, just watch the Sleepy Hollow version. And it's along with The Wolfman, probably my favorite thing to welcome in the autumn season. I love it so much. It's beautifully animated with gorgeous autumnal atmosphere. It does have some Halloween in it. And for this list, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm kind of trying to stay away from Halloween and just stay purely autumnal. So I warn you about a little bit of Halloween in this. Uh, but then the, the legendary chase between Ichabod Ichabod and the Headless Horseman. This is my favorite version of it on film for sure. But I also love the Tim Burton version, which I recently did a video on. You can check that out on the channel. It also has incredible autumnal atmosphere, very much on the gloomy side where like I keep comparing everything to Trouble with Harry because it's probably the best movie on this list just for fall vibes. But that's the beautiful version. This is the dark, decaying, gloomy version, even more so than the dark half. And it's really great for that. I love the Tim Burton movie. If you haven't seen it, like, my God, check it out. It's one of the best big budget gothic horror films ever made. All right, let's talk about a classic horror comedy. This is Arsenic and Old Lace from 1944, directed by Frank Capra and starring Cary Grant. It stars Cary Grant as a man who is about to get married. He goes home to visit his two aunts who raised him, and he discovers that while they are the sweetest, most wonderful women in the world, they're also serial killers. And they don't understand that there's anything wrong with that. They actually think they're helping these people by killing them. And the movie essentially is him freaking out, trying to figure out what to do with his homicidal ants and trying to figure out what to do with a dead body in their house. And it is hilarious. It is so funny. It's so much fun. And it does take place on Halloween, but the movie is much more heavy, I would say, on autumn atmosphere than on Halloween atmosphere. You're not going to see a lot of Halloween decorations in this. Uh, you're more so going to see dark wind blowing, dead trees, leaves, uh, just that terrific autumnal atmosphere that we all love. I think this is a really fun movie. I was actually in the play in high school that I did before I even saw the movie. But once I saw it, uh, the, you know, this is like the best version of the play possible because Cary Grant is the best version of the main character possible. He is so funny in this. My favorite version of Cary Grant is the incredibly high, strong, nervous, super high energy comedy Grant. Uh, comedy Grant. That is so fun. He's so great at that. And uh, this is this is maybe his peak comedy performance, possibly. All right, let's close things out by talking about another 80s horror movie. This is The Stepfather from 1987. This is a film that tells the story, and I'm not spoiling anything, the movie tells you right up front, about a man who is a serial killer. And he's obsessed with the nuclear family, with the traditional American dream. And he wants it so bad without actually having to earn it. And what he does essentially is he marries women with children and he becomes a stepfather and he tries to be the perfect American father, like from a sitcom or something. But things always go wrong in life. Things are not perfect. And anytime things turn imperfectly, his solution is to kill the whole family, change his identity, move on to a new town, and start over. Now, this man is played by Terry O'Quinn, and while the movie itself is not an incredibly surprising story, Terry O'Quinn is so incredible in the lead role. He is the show. His performance is so phenomenal as this man, who's a complete monster, but so fascinating because of the way Terry O'Quinn plays him. He's such a strange, unusual serial killer. And by the way, I will note, 
I'm not the biggest fan of serial killer movies. I'm not really that interested in serial killers like I am in more mythological horror characters like vampires and werewolves. But this guy, just as the demented darkest side possible of the traditional American father, is fascinating. And just watching everything that makes his character tick throughout the movie, I, I'm just so fascinated by it. I love it. I think this movie's great. Joel Sholin plays his stepdaughter, who is the one person who does not believe his facade and is investigating throughout the movie to try to figure out what is so creepy about this guy. She's great. She's kind of an 80s screen queen. Gotta love her. But the movie was shot in Vancouver, British Columbia, and it has a perfect autumnal suburban atmosphere, which is something that we haven't quite hit on this list yet. And you do get giant trees lining this traditional American suburb street, dead leaves all over the place. There's a scene very early on where the mom is raking leaves and her and the daughter actually have a leaf fight, almost like a snowball fight where they're throwing giant piles of leaves at each other, jumping into the pile. And it's one of those perfect autumnal scenes that if that doesn't get you into the spirit, I don't know what will. So this is a really good horror movie, kind of scary, very violent, I will warn you, but so interesting on a character level. And it's just a good story. It's just a good story, very well told told. So that's it, folks. That is my list of autumn movies that I recommend you check out to get you in the spirit of this wonderful season. As you could see, I did try to stay away from the season of Halloween. I may do a more Halloween-y list a little bit later in the year. But for now, thank you so much for watching. If you missed it, do check out my video that I recently did on Tim Burton's Sleepy Hollow and the new Steelbook. That's on my channel right now. Give a like if you enjoyed this video and a subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and supporting this channel. I really appreciate it. Now, please go enjoy yourself watch some fall movies, do some fall activities, hit up a pumpkin patch, a corn maze, enjoy this season. I know I'm going to because it's my absolute favorite time of year. Thanks very much. I'll see you next time.